Lent offered, it, to me, it was like this light bulb that went off was, oh, we get to, to broaden the story. Lent gives us the opportunity to let Easter be the climax of yeah. the story. And and it kind of relieves the pressure of making Easter this. It builds anticipation, yes. right? Mm-hmm. I mean, and mm-hmm. and wonder about the season that's coming. Yes. Welcome to Tacos Al Pastor, our podcast here at Trinity Baptist Church. We're excited to dig into both tacos and the conversation today. That's our tagline, come for the tacos, stay for the conversation. Uh, This is Caleb Sines. Caleb is uh, another pastor here in San Antonio, has been a worship pastor, is now uh, a lead pastor for The Garden, uh, a church plant here that he and his wife uh, recently launched in 2023. Yep, September. So it's been yeah. about five months. We've got it all figured out. It's great. Yep. <laughs> You've answered all the problems <laughs> yeah. that perpetually yeah. plague churches. Huh? <laughs> but today we're going to uh, have a conversation about the season of Lent. Uh, and this whole series is about Lent and Lenten practices mm-hmm. and the history and all of that of it. And so we're going to get into that. But first, we're going to dig into some tacos. So these, I've been told, come from uh, Taquito San Miguel Allende. It's a taco truck uh, north of 1604 here in San Antonio. So uh, I've never had them before, but they smell amazing. I could smell them when I walked <laughs> yeah. in the building. So we're going to dig in. All right, which which are which again? Yeah, gosh, I don't remember what's what yeah, on here. Pastor. There's okay. a chorizo, I think, on the end, the pastor in the middle, and uh, I'm just going to start on this side All and right. work my way across. I'll race you for the middle. <laughs> <laughs> and so we've got some onions and uh, cilantro, maybe, a little lime. And I'm, uh, I'm simple. I just go for the lime. Lime? Yeah. Man, and then I might have to put some of this salsa on there in a minute, but know, gonna... one of them smells much hotter than the other, so we'll see. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. Very good. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, the quiet nod and the mm-hmm, that's like, yeah, oh, yeah. And Caleb just finished up like whole third year or something, right? So this oh, is... Oh, yeah. <laughs> it I have It hits different. Oh, yeah. No sugar, no soy, no dairy, no alcohol, no fun. Mm. So, I'm uh, yeah, this is fantastic. Mm. Mm-hmm. The corn tortilla is so good. Like, that might be mm-hmm. the best corn tortilla I've ever mm-hmm. had. That is awesome. You Girl. went for the green sauce? Mm-hmm. The green salsa there? I'm going to try both. Uh, I'm so brave with this giant spoon. I'm going to go, yeah. <laughs> so, ladling a little bit. I'm going to go very minimal here at first. Man, those, these are so good. As I said before, uh, we started gorging ourselves on tacos. Um, Caleb's a fellow pastor, a fellow liturgy nerd, mm-hmm. um, a fellow name dropper of uh, <laughs> important books and things that we've loved to read. And so I'm, I'm really excited to chat today. We're going to go deep on the season of Lent. And one of the reasons I asked Caleb to come and join us is because he wrote a piece uh, last year that was picked up by Christianity to Christianity Today. Um, titled Against the Lenten Frenzy. Mm-hmm. And it's mm-hmm. it's a great short little piece. Um, I, I hope we can tag that Thank in the, yep. the description of the of the podcast, of the video. Um, but it, it raises a lot of really important questions mm-hmm. about the season of Lent and why we either don't do it and shy away from it or why we should lean into it. And, and so... For many in the evangelical and Baptist life, right? Mm-hmm. It's Lent is a foreign concept. Mm-hmm. Um, so, just a, a handful of quick facts at you here uh, to talk a little bit about what Lent means. It's it's typically a, a period of about forty days leading up to Holy Week. It's different slightly in different traditions, and so um, we won't be too specific about it. But right. it models this pattern that Jesus sets forth by going out into the desert for 40 days and fasting uh, and then being tempted by Satan before entering into his his ministry, um, his public ministry. It starts in our tradition with Ash Wednesday and goes to Maundy Thursday or, or um, Holy Saturday, depending on, on how you celebrate that. But it's meant to be the season to prepare us for mm. the joyful celebration of Easter through a series of intentional practices Sometimes we do those in our normal practice, and some mm-hmm. of them are unique, um, really, to the season of Lent. Mm-hmm. 
But this is a tradition that we've seen going on since really the early foundations of the church, since the early church, like writers like Athanasius and Augustine, um, Egeria, who takes this pilgrimage from Europe in the fourth century to Jerusalem and writes about how early Christians in Jerusalem were already practicing this pattern. Um, and so it's just a beautiful tradition, long-standing tradition of the church. Mm-hmm. And and I, I think, we think, at Trinity Baptist Church, it's worth practicing and worth celebrating together. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want to turn towards your article for a second, because sure. yeah. there was one question that kind of haunted me as I <laughs> as I read it. I loved, I loved the way you phrased it. Um, he's talking about as pastors and writing somewhat to pastors, mm-hmm. right? As we're, as you're saying, the biggest time of the year for most of us, the biggest day in the church year is Easter, right? Mm-hmm. It's the day where a lot of people will come to church that day who maybe aren't there the rest of the year. Um, we're putting all of our staff energies and attention towards the multiple services of Holy mm-hmm. Week, mm-hmm. Um, at least in our, in yeah. our church. Yeah. Um, and, and you asked this question of why burden the beginning of their annual race, this race towards Easter, this push towards Easter with the heaviness of sustained introspection. Why why burden? We're so busy, right? As mm -hmm. pastors and as Christians in this season, um, it just seems like a heavy weight Mm -hmm. to to shift towards Lent. Talk talk a little bit about why you think Lent is important for us um, and some of the practices for that. So uh, just a little bit of background. Personally, I didn't didn't grow up doing Lent. Uh, And I think part of it was, uh, especially here in San Antonio, it's a very Catholic city. Yeah. Lent tends to be associated with specifically with Catholicism, right? And so my my mother, who came out of Catholicism, uh, really grew up in a very charismatic church. I did uh, with her and my father, and uh, I I don't know that the liturgical calendar was something we thought about, right. especially in terms of of Lent. I mean, maybe the the big two, you know, or three right. if you count Mother's Day. Well, that's not on the liturgical calendar, right? Um, I, for me, it wasn't a, a part of practice. And so it wasn't until I got into the, the nerd names of, uh, of <laughs> liturgy, all, all my heroes, some of whom I have tattoos up, uh, we can have a different podcast for tattoos <laughs> right. and Baptists. But I, I lent for me, uh, it really stood in stark contrast to what I had experienced in years of ministry in contemporary evangelical spaces. Yeah. And part of that is is Easter becomes the the focal point of the whole church calendar, but it also becomes a something that you almost have to sell, yeah. and, and and this is just the reality of church in a, a setting that often feels like a marketplace mm-hmm. uh, where there's competition uh, for for attention, and so you're trying to sell. Hey, here's why you should come to Easter. It's going to be a great experience, and that actually tends to dominate the whole season because just like you would roll out a movie or a, I don't know, a book that you're releasing, yeah. there's that whole runway to get people's attention until the big release date. So because of that, we start acting like Easter's here before it's here because we're celebrating now in this attitude that we think we need to, Absolutely. to have for Easter. But w- what I had found was every year that approach actually diminished what Easter was. And that coupled with, uh, for a lot of churches in contemporary evangelical spaces, and I'm not throwing shade, I think this is just the reality of where we're at culturally, Sundays have become so much about evangelism Mm -hmm. that discipleship has become almost secondary. We'll do that in the homes or Bible studies. And so you have this big pressure on Easter to tell the entirety of the gospel story very quickly with extra service elements, 10 times the volunteers to do it across multiple services, maintain your energy somehow, Red Bull addictions happen in that season. And what happens is you tell this truncated version of the story because you think all you have is that Sunday. Oh, man, it's so true. What Lent offered, to me, it was like this light bulb that went off was, oh, we get to to broaden the story. Um, It's the difference between seeing a a painting across the room and getting up real close to it and seeing the details. Lent gives us the opportunity to let Easter be the climax of the story. and. And it kind of relieves the pressure of making Easter this. It builds anticipation, yes. right? Mm-hmm. I mean, and mm-hmm. and wonder about the season that's coming. Yes. And I think we lose so much of that in in the way we mm-hmm. tend to practice each and every Sunday, and especially yeah. these seasonal pushes towards Easter or Christmas Eve mm-hmm. or whatever mm-hmm. it might be. Um, you know, I, I think back to the lots of liturgical theologians who 
who talk about worship is really for the faithful. It's not meant to be this consumeristic drawing together. Right, right. I mean, we see that come in the latter part of the 20th century, right, with the church growth movement and other things. Uh, but to try to, like you said, to shove everything and shoehorn everything into a Sunday morning mm-hmm. is not the way the faith is intended right, right. to be lived out and practiced. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, maybe what are some of the practices that have really been formational for you? So I, I think, and, and with that that last bit, it's I, I don't want to dismiss Easter as a great opportunity. For <laughs> right, for sure. But I, but please I think, come, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, <laughs> please come. We'll give you. <laughs> we'll put the service times at the bottom. I'm just kidding. But I, I think what's what's helpful is if the people who are there, who are there every week, recognize they walk through the story of land. Easter becomes this yeah. big celebration. Then the people who are guests really understand the impact of the story. Yeah. So in, in answer, and I think it ties in with that question. Um, there's been a few practices for us, uh, but but the thing that's tied them together, as much as there's a personal reality to the practices of Lent, there's a deep communal reality. Mm-hmm. So even practices of, of fasting, which have been, you know, it's, I always tell people, we start the year with Whole30 to kind of balance out the engorgement of December and November. I don't right. know if that's a word, but you know what I mean. <laughs> And uh, people are like, oh, is it for the days of fasting? I'm like, no, no, no. It's just because we need it. You know, we feel you gotta have a certain hard way in reset, January. Right? <laughs> uh, but I, I always look, you know, there's churches that start their year with 21 days of yeah. fasting, and then there's Lent. And I'm going, you're going to have the skinniest congregation in San Antonio by the time you get to Easter. But it's that idea of doing something together right. that I think is really important. So for us in the past, and, and we'll do this again in a deeper way as our kids get older, it's fasting from certain things so we can make room uh, for what we know is better, right. and and on a you know a broad sense that's Jesus, but in a in a very deep sense it's it's being like Jesus, doing right. what Jesus did, and so all of them are tied together. I mean, fasting is important, but charity comes with it. So yeah. the space you make is meant to help you cultivate generosity. So our plan this year is to use fasting in particular with the kids to create space at our tables for their friends or their friends' that's families, beautiful. and that, that's the idea. Yeah. But fasting's been great. Um, usually, uh, we, we say, you know, fasting needs to be costly, mm-hmm. um, and it needs to be challenging, and it needs to be consistent. Those are the kind of things yeah. we, we lean on. Because, I mean, some people give up chocolates, and if you're a chocoholic, maybe that works. But the idea is that, uh, and this was a, a unique to my understanding, was that picking a fast that you can fail at, and probably will. Right. Um, I mean, you don't want to beat yourself over the the back with with your failure, but if, if it was something you could accomplish yeah. on your own, then you're kind right. of missing that. Well, that, that's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. I, I More often than not, I start intentionally doing something, mm-hmm. giving up social media, or yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, it was so hard, especially when you're trying to publicize Easter, yeah. right? I mean, you go, oh, well, I got to get on there to share this one video, right? Oh, it's really yeah. important. Um, but so often I, I fail at that. Um, but it's digging back in afterwards and finding mm-hmm. that, yeah, I can't do this alone, as with any sort of yeah. addiction or any sort of yeah. sin, right, that we're trying to to overcome. It it takes the Holy Spirit's presence in our lives yes. to yeah. really empower any of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gosh, one of the ones that that's so powerful for me, and this is part of, goes against my personality. Dig back into the tacos, say, As we're talking about Yeah, fasting. we got to go for the I'm second gonna... one. Um you know, part of what's been what's meaningful for me during this season is because it is so busy. I take um, contemplative prayer is a really it's important for my own spirit, mm-hmm. just to sit still and being quiet. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that's aided by music. Sometimes that's aided <clears throat> by written prayers um, that that come from any number of various sources. Uh, but one that's been really meaningful for me is Tizé music. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. Um, I've been to, went to Tizé in France a couple of years ago, and we've done wow. some of it in our practice here as well. Not really on Sunday mornings, but in mm-hmm. some special services. And I, on my best days, I come into my into the office first thing in the morning, and I spend you know fifteen minutes mm-hmm. in prayer mm-hmm. or ten minutes in in prayer. Maybe it's singing some of those. Maybe it's putting it on in the background, yeah. and I'm praying about other things or reading through prayer prompts. Uh, but that helps me to counteract the busyness yeah. of this season between the choir rehearsals and the band practices and the, you know, that's uh, so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Planning meetings, right? I mean, mm-hmm. it, it adds mm-hmm. up really quickly. And if you don't intentionally work against that, right, it can yeah. just overwhelm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's the invitation of Lent is to kind of, I, I heard this story uh, of this man, he was in a boating accident and, 
you know, tragically, every everybody passed away except for this mm. guy. He was under the water. This boat sunk. He was there for six days, and he had this pocket of air that he was just literally mm. surviving whatever was floating around him, and they rescued him. But he had survived there for six days because of this pocket of air. And I think one of the benefits of Lent in the season, especially to people in ministry, but really to everybody, is we're still in that hustle and, and movement of the new year. People haven't maybe fully given up on their resolutions yet. Um, <laughs> it's coming. Yeah, right? it's coming. <laughs> Spring breaks around the corner. I mean, you know, it, it, there's a there's a pace to it. Um, and I feel like Lent allows us to create these pockets of intentional space. Yeah. And um, where you kind of turn the white noise to the white space. And that that means something. It gives it some some meaning for you to to sit and be okay. Hmm. Um, and and at different times in in your life that can be uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, it usually is at the beginning, but I think it becomes pockets of life. Mm-hmm. Um, and that that's the invitation of land. I, I try to tell people, uh, uh, Schmemann, uh, mm-hmm. and another dead <laughs> guy we love for, in liturgy. Uh, he called Lent uh, the season of bright sadness. Yeah. Which I it love feels that. like those two things shouldn't yeah. shouldn't go together, but but there's something about it, like you know, grieving who we are left to ourselves, but the brightness of Easter is that we don't have to be that. We can walk with the power of the Spirit yeah. to the newness of life in Christ. So, Yeah. I'm going to dig into another yeah. taco here. Let's see. i got to change it up. So I, this is the tacos al pastor. And the middle the one is the chorizo. I think. Uh, it looks like it. It's, I mean, they're all pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> hey, the, the greens, I, I know the... It's pretty good. The red. You want to uh, try it? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that hot. I I'll, mean, I I'll put a little. little. I'll, I'll put, a little. put a little on there. Listen, I'm I'm first generation, and I'm still a big baby on the spice stuff. So, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, mm. two maybe, thumbs up. Maybe the the spice tolerance skips a generation. Man, that's if I'm really frank, it's a big part of the reason why my wife and I moved to San Antonio mm-hmm. is because we love the spice, mm-hmm. and and uh, our daughter does too. She's only three. Our oldest daughter is only three, oh, but wow. she's like digging in the salsa. I think it's because Sarah. Ate like a jar of jalapenos every day during pregnancy, and so it just kind of settled in. My son called a pepperoni from Little Caesars uh, Caesars spicy the other day. I was like, "Okay, I've done something wrong here. Yeah, <laughs> we got to work on this." Yeah, yeah. Okay, the chorizo is amazing too. I'll put a little of the red on the Go for last it. bite. Here, slide the green, the green over here as well. If I yell cut, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, good. You're good running out of the room. The screen's great. It's got like the tomatillo in it. Mm. Nice. Mm. I went a little heavy on the green there, but no, that's it's a, good. I think that's going to be good. Mm-hmm. Mm. So when I first brought up Lent at uh, our sending church, I love Alamo Community Church is amazing. Let's put their info at the mm-hmm. They um it was new. Yeah. I mean, even the even doing a good Friday was new at the time. Right. They had been a mobile church like we are now. So the prospect of doing a midweek service was always difficult. Right. But, right. But we introduced the the concept of Lent <laughs> and the pushback. Um, and it wasn't like, no, we're not doing that. But even just among the staff was like, well, that feels heavy. Is it diminishing? Um, you know, why would we lean into that? And so we had all these conversations, but the thing that I thought was great was, well, our staff meetings were on Tuesday. So why not on Tuesday before Ash Wednesday, we have a fat Tuesday, like staff meeting or Shrove Tuesday. We'll make pancakes and all that. So I think leaning into that, like Lent is meant to be concentrated and it's, it's intentional and it's deep, but, um, Unlike other fasts, I just did Whole30, there's feast days. Like right. Sundays are supposed to be where you celebrate together. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, we got here. Let's let's relish what we have in right. community together, feeding on Christ. So I think having the balance there is, is helpful. For so. sure. Yeah, so you're talking a bit about some of the... We, we've talked a bit about these intentional daily sorts of practices. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some, some ways that Sundays might look different mm-hmm. during this season? In, in our context, we, you know, visually, we do this even when people walk into the sanctuary um, at our Mulberry campus. We have this fabric installation that mm. we do during the season of Lent. We've done that every year for the last six six years, I think. And so when you walk into the sanctuary, you 
immediately notice that it looks different. It yes. sets it aside. And so that's a visual one, but there are certainly musical cues uh, and yeah. preaching cues mm-hmm. and other things mm-hmm. in the service. What are some ways that you guys might do that? So uh, the first time I really got a chance to, to shape this was a few years ago at ACC. And so we had, we developed um, resources for the congregation outside of right. Sunday that were tied into the worship sets on Sunday morning. And so uh, it was a weekly devotional. There were prayer practices, uh, daily prayer practices. And then on Sundays, um, it was a lot of visual cues were really important, which I, that's kind of the challenge when you're a mobile church a little right. bit. I'm like, uh, maybe we can just figure that out. And we, we're having those conversations now. Mm-hmm. But for us, the liturgy uh, offers the opportunity not to introduce elements that aren't already there, but to maybe change the emphases a yeah. little bit. And so I think one of those is confession yep. and, and the other is space. So in, in our liturgy, and we're actually starting this week, even though Lent starts on, on the Wednesday after, we're going to start to introduce a lot of that this week. We'll hand out our Lent guide, which we've printed. I brought, it's not an advertisement, it's free, <laughs> but we, nice. uh, we made this uh, little guide, just explain the season, some resources. And then on our site, we'll have some daily prayer practices, but yeah. on Sundays, corporately, we're going to kind of walk people through in the middle of our set, a prayer moment built around the Psalm. And so, uh, it'll very brief devotional, usually by, um, I say member of our staff, which is right now two people, <laughs> uh, but, or, or our core team. Right. And, uh, in that moment, it's, it's going to let the Psalm speak. And then we're going to invite people to spend time um, just in silence with the Holy Spirit for a few moments, yeah. which if you've never done that before, especially in church setting, can feel intimidating. Yeah. But I think the rhythm of that in the season of Lent really draws people to just realize like we, we don't come to worship to perform. Right. Um, we're responding, even just showing up. And so what does yeah. it look like to And to that is that? so countercultural, right, oh, in the way that we... Completely talk about church as attractional where we make, mm-hmm. we want to make it as oftentimes the lowest common denominator, mm-hmm. right? Of mm-hmm. Okay. We don't want people to feel uncomfortable. And, and certainly we've made those steps in our own congregation of like, ah, okay, that let's change something mm-hmm. there that mm-hmm. maybe worked in the 1960s and doesn't work now or whatever, or worked in 1990. Totally. Right. Totally. So there, there are certainly those contextual things that change, but, but there is something about that deep practice of, of being uncomfortable together, mm-hmm. right? I, I love that. Uncomfortable together. together. That's yeah. going to be our new phrase. <laughs> I love it. Perfect. <laughs> That's our next shirts. Um, I, uh, for me, being being together in those spaces is uncomfortable. But I, our measure, like relevancy, is important. You don't yeah. want to be like a, intentionally obscure, right? Um, but our, uh, what we've said together in our planning meetings is resonance before relevance. Love Meaning, it. like something can can feel just. People can enter into a story or an experience and not have um, immediate relevance to them. Mm-hmm. But if it's resonant, it's it's going to impact them. Which, I mean, honestly, like we're singing about blood and flesh and, I mean, talking about lambs and right. the, the Holy Ghost. It's to a lot of people, it is remarkably irrelevant. <laughs> right. But I think, uh, you know, I think in, is it First Corinthians 14, where everybody's doing something very culturally weird. Uh, they're prophesying. Although right. at that time in Corinth, there was prophecy, but it was different in this space. Everybody's doing it. Right. Um, it's being translated and the unbeliever witnesses it, this moment that's irrelevant to him, but it becomes resonant when the Holy Spirit working right. is directed towards that person. Yeah. The treasures of his heart are revealed. And the thing that I love is this unbeliever who comes as surely God was among you. Hmm. And I think that's what's important for us. Lent actually creates a space where we have less of us, so it kind of makes it more apparent that God is indeed among us. So, Absolutely. Yeah. That's beautiful. And I love that deep connection with the Psalms and the Psalter mm-hmm, during mm-hmm. during oh, the huge. season of Lent. Huge. And it's probably huge every week, and we probably miss out <laughs> yeah. we probably miss out on that opportunity mm-hmm. more often than not. Um, but I, I love that. One of the other practices that I think is crucial for the season of Lent, and my pastor and I were talking about this this morning. Um, so it's really come up is the practice of lament mm-hmm. and, and we mm-hmm. are terrible at doing that on a regular basis in, in worship services, but we're, we're trying this year to be intentional about a little bit more space mm-hmm. to, to lament and introduce this really biblical practice coming out of the Psalms. Mm-hmm. And, and, um, particularly I think with our, our good Friday service this year, we're yes. leaning into yes. that. Um, has that been a practice for you? That's been yes. Crucial? Um, I mean, I, I, 
get labeled by my wife a sad boy often. So <laughs> I, I, I enjoy, uh, in a weird way, uh, yeah. thinking through those things. But I, I think, too, um, the promotion of Easter is sometimes... Uh, it's built in such a way where you know there's hurting people who need to find a joyful place. But the emphases can sometimes overemphasize the joyful place, which, I mean, you know, if you've ever been in a heavy place walking into a church where you're kind of confronted or bombarded with that, right. can make you feel like there's not a place for you. And it's not that joy doesn't belong there. I mean, Romans twelve fifteen is joy and, and right. grief in the same space. The whole book but, of Philippians, right? Exactly, I mean, the entire book. Right. So I think for, and the Psalms, I mean, even in the same space, um, I, I think having those two things present helps. And sometimes Lent can be a corrective for that, exactly right. like you said, uh, to create space. I, I, I've found, too, everybody grieves within and outside of the church, but the beauty of lament is it's giving people a pattern to Absolutely. do so faithfully. And I think that's a real gift to people yeah. that we can emphasize in this season. Yeah, Walter mm-hmm. Brueggemann, the Old Testament mm-hmm. scholar, talks about lament and and he says, you know, the the it's there in the Psalter, but God never leaves the people of Israel there, mm-hmm. right? They have oh, these yes. seasons of living, mm-hmm. but it always leads to uh, a renewed calling in their own lives, a renewed covenant, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. a joyful moment. And so I think that's a really beautiful way to think about lament in our lives, mm-hmm. that if we lean into uh, what God is doing and can do in those through those challenging moments, it can be so transformative for for us as people of faith. Mm-hmm. And 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 yeah. doing it in a corporate setting too, I think, takes the the stigma of mm. grief that yeah. it's a private matter into the reality of the church, where it becomes shared. If one part of the body's hurting, the whole body feels it. And so I think grief, especially in the context of Lent, corporately yeah. lamenting, becomes something we do together. Yeah. And I think that's that's healthy, and that that b- does more to build the church. Uh, than, than I think just a 100% praise uh, kind of service. For sure, yeah. Well, do you have a, I mean, if you were to share a final word about Lent and its meaning in your own sure. in your own journey, uh, what would that be? Um, I, I, think, I think Lent is a necessary component of uh, receiving the story of Jesus and reflecting the yeah. story of Jesus. And I think a lot of us, when we think about worship, um, we reflect one side of the spirit and truth divide. Mm-hmm. Um, some of us think of worship and as concentrating really hard or feeling something really hard um, or just this total spirit abandoned, but it, it's both together. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think Lent is a spiritual, physical, emotional, mental, communal experience, personal experience as well. And I think all of worship is supposed to be that way, but Lent... Yeah gives us an invitation to really step into that intentionally uh, with other people and, and and experience that together and, I think, heightens the joy of Easter. Absolutely. No, I think that's great. Thanks, Caleb, for, Thank for you, your, sharing yeah. your thoughts and uh, look forward to seeing where the conversation continues uh, mm-hmm. offline and where it goes from here. Um, thanks for joining us on this episode of Tacos Al Pastor as we're learning about the season of Lent and journeying through this Lenten season together. If you take a moment to like and subscribe the video, we'd love that. That'd be it's a great way to share and also share it. It's a great way to continue to be connected with the content that we're putting together here and resources we're putting together. Thanks, Caleb, for joining us. And we'd love for you guys to join us on Sunday mornings, either at the Garden or at Trinity Baptist Church. Uh, and thanks just for, for listening, for us rambling for a while <laughs> about, about the things we love and Linton practices. I think... Uh, were you going to go for that last I'll, one? I'll wrestle you for Go it, for yeah. it. You take it. I accidentally had lunch today. <laughs> That's what I, I, well, I, I did it. I accidentally didn't have there lunch. There you go. <laughs>